The UK-based Economic Intelligence Unit is predicting Ghana will face challenges servicing its huge debt next year. This is because the country's debt servicing commitment will eat up a significant part of the nation's revenue in 2023. The Finance Ministry this month announced its decision to suspend all debt servicing under certain categories of its external debt, but also a domestic debt as well. Uh, but the EIU said in spite of this, the public sector debt to GDP ratio of many African countries will remain above 60%. My colleague Rick Wasanti has been studying the report and he joins me via Zoom uh, with details of that report. Kweku, uh, so Ghana is not in this bracket alone, but what is the premise for this prediction by the EIU? And it's uh, not particularly good-looking report from the EIU in terms of Ghana's economic outlook for the year 2023. Indeed, the report says that Ghana, Tunisia, Egypt, Congo, Brazzaville, Zambia, Zimbabwe, as well as Mozambique, all these countries have enormous amounts of debt relative to their GDP, and the governments will have to grapple with debt servicing burdens that will eat up substantial share of the revenue in 2023. On the average, the public sector debt ratio will remain about 60% for Africa in 2022, whilst in 2023, some African countries will far exceed this level. This is why there is a need to service and roll over such large amounts of debt at a time when domestic and international borrowing costs are still on the rise and will weigh heavily on some countries in the 2023. And things could even get worse and painful when in 2024, there will be more capital repayments which will be falling due. It's for debt servicing, but there's also a prediction on the exchange rate and the EIU is saying there'll be some pressure on that level as well. Run us through the details. Indeed, in, in, in a similar vein, Ghana, Malawi, Sierra Leone, Ethiopia and Egypt will all suffer from elevated rates of inflation according to the EIU. That, that will be the consequence of currencies depreciating by more than 10% against the US dollar. In particular, in the case of Ghana, the EIU is predicting that about 22% depreciation will happen relative to a Ghana to the city, uh, the dollar to the city in 2023, while the report emphasizes that policymakers will be faced by the most pressing need to tighten monetary policy as likely to be found in Ghana, Ethiopia, Egypt, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. The annual average consumer price inflation will also be double digits for about 42% of African states. In Ghana, for instance, we know now that we are hovering around 50% and it is said to go even higher. So these are not pretty good looking in terms of what the outlook is for Ghana and some African countries, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit. Good, thank you very much. And we have the full report on myjoyonline.com. Well, essential portions of it that you can read. Uh, but let's do some analysis on this. Professor Botbrin is a professor of finance and economist at the University of Ghana Business School, and he joins us uh, on the line. Uh, Prof, thank you very much for your time. So we have institu instituted a debt restructuring program. Uh, there's a domestic one, there's an external one that has also been announced. And we have also been able to secure a staff level agreement with the IMF. You'll think that all of these will influence uh, the outlook of the EIU as far as servicing our debt is concerned. Yes. Good evening and good evening to your service viewers. Yes, you are right. So, um, largely, a lot of what is contained in the report is now common knowledge. Um, the market knows that now stakeholders are aware now in terms of Ghana's uh, debt situation. At some point, they were back and forth, but government has officially admitted, uh, announced actually a bankruptcy status and all of that. Uh, so to that extent, yeah, we will say that uh, the, the report mirrors reality. But I think that um, there have been a lot of uh, initiatives that um, should moderate the outlook if if we are able to implement them. One of them is the debt restructuring that the government is doing, um, at least to the extent that the um, government has commenced that uh, restructuring, especially if you look at the domestic debt and all of that, is an admission that the country cannot meet its financial obligations as and when they fall due without sharp adjustment to fiscal policy in terms of income and expenditure. So the report talks about that, the proportion of revenue 
that is consumed by interest payment alone, without even talking about amortization, then of course, and and and, and the fiscal implication, the crowding out effect, and all of that. So um, the outlook, a lot will depend on how well government manages the debt exchange program mm. or the debt restructuring. So uh, far, and, and Prof, given adopted, the pushback that we've seen uh, yeah. at the domestic level, where we are now seeing a U-turn from uh, pension funds being mm -hmm. ex exempted to now individual bonds, it, it now leaves you to question whether the quantum of, 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 of debt that we are exempting will actually give us the expected relief, uh, which will then you know, go to speak to the credibility or otherwise, or the weight that we put on this EIU report? Yes, so as we've said, um, typically we are not behind the curve. If you look at other countries, how long it takes them to secure creditor agreement, it, it, it hasn't been that easy. And, and we are hopeful that government would, would engage constructively, build consensus around a debt exchange in a manner that does not leave star experience on, 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 on people. Because as it stands now, and even with the revisions that government has made, I think it's, it's, it's too steep how much government is asking creditors to contribute or to bring to the table in, in, in restoring debt sustainability. It, it's, it's just too much, too steep. So government needs to take another look. But to be able to achieve the overall goal of restoring debt sustainability by 2028, as the president told us in one of the fellow Ghanaians' speech in the evening, yeah. right, by, uh, 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 bringing debt to GDP ratio to about 55% and external debt servicing to revenue of about 18% or below, will mean a, a, a combination of fiscal adjustment and debt operation. So if, if the fiscal adjustment is doing minimum, then it means that the debt operation must cover up the difference. But I think we need to have a fair balance. That way we can achieve progress within the shortest possible time. And that could actually moderate the, the, the excessively negative outlook that is projected for 2023 and beyond. But also bear in mind that uh, the staff level agreement is not a program. Right. So we still need to make progress in, in certain prior actions mm -hmm. so that the staff level agreement can go to the uh, executive board. Bear in mind that we are yet to open the IMF file and see what is in it. But every projection, even as will be contained in the IMF staff level agreement, will be dependent on certain assumptions. So if we delay so much before the staff level agreement goes to the board, then there may be the need for certain revisions to the staff level agreement because all the assumptions may not hold for that long. So these are some of the things. So time is not on our side. One would expect that government will be more open, uh, more uh, 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 engaging, so that some kind of um, consensus is built around how to resolve right. our debt level. Right. But under this current circumstance, I mm -hmm. think there will still be a pushback, mm -hmm. particularly the fact that government has decided to include individual investors. Mm. At, because if you look at some components of the individual investors, these are extremely vulnerable people right. that, as a country, we should, we should be more mindful of how we protect Ghana's vulnerable senior citizens, people who are on retirement mm. and have invested their retirement lump sum money in government bonds and are living off the coupon and the rest of them. A nation should not do that to its senior citizens. Well, so I think we, that all is not lost. Government can use micro data to do some level of segregation so yeah. that we are able to protect the vulnerable in, in society and the rest of particularly those who are on, on pension and the rest right. of them. Well, but we'll see how that, this proceeds uh, if government will heed to uh, the raft of measures that you have really suggested in order to sustain uh, our finances and indeed our debt as the EIU is predicting.